Okay, we are ready to go. Uh, okay, Rob is with us. Great. Um, again, apologies for that technical glitch. I think it was just going too smoothly, but we're just going to jump right back into it because we still have a lot of ground to cover. And hopefully so nothing me. happens. <laughs> now I'm scared of my computer. Um, where are you? Well, so I think that free break in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think I finished giving that summary for the yellow rose uh, proposal, and uh, we were just opening up for um, discussion for the working group members. And this is again, I don't know if you can highlight. Yeah, I think that's the one uh, proposal number twenty eight. And I think the applicant was here. I don't know if she's back in the meeting right now, um, but she was earlier. Yeah, I think she's here. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging on there. Um, so the recommended amount is a little over 27,000. Um, that's only 30% of your total requested amounts. I think the question is, uh, is that doable? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, ideally it would be great to have a grad student because you build more continuity. It can be done with uh, you know, other ways of having assistance and things like that but it is totally doable um maybe department of ag is there any input on this project um as a priority for the department I'm not sure um, sorry, I, I haven't looked at who was able to jump back on. Maybe people just took advantage of the Maybe. break. There. And I just wanted to point out that this proposal came out of the discussion from the Africanized Honeybee Action Plan meeting. And that was kind of like the, the start of the, the concept of the proposal originated there. And um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Sorry, Leila, what was that? That the original idea for this proposal originated in one of the meetings for the Africanized Honeybee Action Plan. And um, yeah. Okay. So that's... is this related to previous proposals that the applicant has made? Is it part of a multi-year project or is this uh, something entirely different? Um, I will let the applicant address that. Okay. Hi, yeah, thanks for uh, the question. Well, obviously, because it focuses on Africanized bees, there's some overlap. But over the time I've been working here in Arizona for a while and seeing what's happened with Africanized bees, it really has made me realize that if we're going to try to maintain the Africanized bee out of Hawaii, we need to address the, the core of the problem, which is actually the beekeepers, because I think the, the chances of a accidental arrival is smaller than the one of beekeepers bringing something in. Uh, not to say that, you know, accidental invasions don't occur and they're definitely worth checking, but I think addressing um, a, a bunch of misunderstandings, misinformations that uh, abound among the community will go a long way of securing their cooperation and their participation. Something that unfortunately, because we don't have a registry for beekeepers, we are unlikely to get unless we kind of, you know, play in a more interactive, nice way. So uh, like Leila mentioned in that meeting, the idea was to uh, come up with different ways other than enforcing, restricting more of a cooperative approach to try to get the beekeepers engaged. Okay, any recommendations from members um, keeping as is and moving uh, forward? Just a quick question, I'm sorry, I might've missed this, but how does that relate to the Momalu Poipoi proposal and project? Um, 
so this proposal relates to that in a sense that um, um, I have been facilitating the meetings for the Africanized Honeybee um, Action Plan. So, and in that, um, in those meetings, so we kind of like don't only discuss the airport biosecurity, but we discuss things more holistically. And uh, one of the things that was pointed out uh, by the group is that before we try to address things that need um, more kind of um, um, that needs to go to the ledge for changing that we need to address um, outreach first so that we um, build trust from the stakeholders and that is when like how the kind of the proposal kind of originated like kind of like to build those relationships and get um, that, but that is linked with, um, certainly linked with some of the Mamalu Poi Poi um, activities that um, Ethel is proposing because she's proposing to do some Africanized honeybee testing outside also ports, uh, which is not currently covered by the program. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the idea too is to include both the education for uh, the beekeepers, the education for port workers, postal workers, um, a whole bunch of other groups that are not necessarily the airport uh, swarm traps, but they're also important links in maintaining the Africanized bee out of Hawaii. Does that make sense? So are the beekeepers, um, are you trying to get them involved in surveillance or are they a pathway themselves, I guess? Is uh, I'm trying to get them involved and in, in not one in it here, because unfortunately there's a, there's a great misunderstanding in the general public that because the African ISB has some um, good qualities regarding diseases, that it would be the solution to all the problems regarding Varroa. And that's a very, very dangerous game to play. Um, so what I think I would like to do is convince them, and I have tons of information now after being in Arizona for almost a year on and off, that I can kind of debunk that uh, impression they have. And I think that would go a long way in involving them and involving people in, as well. I would like to address people in the ports, people in the in, in the community as a whole, so that they are definitely more alert. And also by offering things like uh, uh, queen breeding workshops where they can actually create good queens out of their own stock, uh, will discourage them to wanna, you know, is, is the, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence kind of system. So encourage them to appreciate what they have, reducing the temptation to bring things and uh, addressing other community members like the board workers in the post office and things like that to um, basically reduce the, the possibility of uh, arrival. Do the bees have a regulatory status? I mean, wouldn't that be an illegal thing to do is to bring in Africanized? And, and that doesn't stop beekeepers. Unfortunately, it's or, very, it's, it's very scary. But... Yeah, and, and it is, unfortunately, because you can get, and sometimes unknowingly, you can get queens from anywhere in California and Texas, Florida, Arizona, New Mexico, they still have African ice in them. And they sell them as European because there's very little control in the genetics. So bringing in a queen, which is a little tiny wooden box with like, you know, three or four, what are called attendant little bees, you can put that in your pocket, you can walk right through a screener, it will never be found. So I, I cringe about the possibility that somebody will think that, give it a try. Thanks, Ethel. I appreciate um, educating me on that. Um, I think uh, HDOA is back if they have any comments on this one. Um, I, 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 at this point, I would just want to answer any specific questions someone might have since I missed most of the conversation so far. Yeah, and apologies for that. Everybody got kicked off, so you're not alone. Um, oh, I thought it was an omen. I think it was. <laughs> Take a break. Um, 
so we're just discussing Ethel's Africanized honeybee outreach proposal. Um, and she's just, her and Layla are both kind of addressing some of the, the questions. Okay. Um, is, is the general question whether each DOA supports the proposal? Um, I think that's a that's that wasn't a question, but I think that's okay. actually a good one to to answer. Yeah, I mean, well, a couple of things. So um, I'll be more precise. It's not Africanized bees that are regulated by the department. It's um, any Africanized bees would. It, it's any kind of bee import is regulated. European honey bee or variety of that it, that's regulated. So um, outreach to support this rather independent group that likes to do things with or without government blessing is important. <laughs> um, outreach to, to um, workers uh, at the airport is also critical, especially considering um, uh, most of these activities will probably come through Honolulu at some point, uh, if, if, if it is gonna happen. So um, I, the proposal is something that the department supports. Um, and, and Ethel is correct. Uh, queen bees would be inordinately easy to smuggle. And we've seen chatter before about spring, um, uh, there's a strong impetus to bring in Africanized bees because Africanized bees are capable of dealing with um, varroa mite and other pest issues in a uh, more profound manner than their normal European counterparts. Yeah, thanks, Darcy. Um, so to keep this moving along, um, I think we'll recommend to keep the proposal as is, which is, you know, supporting it in some capacity at the moment. And um, we can circle back to that as we kind of move a little bit faster on that second round. Okay, moving forward. So we did go over Tracy's Rubus biocontrol. We're gonna keep going. Um, the next one is Big Island Invasive Species Committee, their proposal for rapid, <clears throat> rapid ohia death funds. Um, this is supporting their rapid ohia death crew that does survey and management um and really are the trainers for the rest of the islands on on how to manage rapid ohia death um so requested amount of two hundred five thousand, um scored 26 so that gave a recommended amount of just over fifty seven thousand. um any any comments from members questions Okay, I think uh, this just runs into the, the business as usual here with, you know, a significant lower yeah. recommended amount. Yeah, yeah. Ahead, I would recommend keeping it as is. Okay. This is the Rob guy. Okay. We'll continue to move forward. The other one is Big Island Invasive Species Committee. So the new incursion that was detected over on the east side of Hawaii Island of chromalina or devil weed. Um, so this is to kind of delimit the area and, and do other surveys and manage those populations they know about. It's really bad over here on Oahu. Uh, so want to keep it from getting out of control over there. The requested amount was uh, just under 56,000. It scored 26 and gave a recommended amount of, of around um, 15,500. Any discussion, questions, comments from members? And I can scroll over here real quick, just so you can see what that cumulative amount is for each of the invasive species committees that I put together. Um, so BISC total, you know, they're requesting with all those proposals about 1.3 million. The recommended amount is around 565,000. Uh, it's 
pretty short of what we gave them last year. So I'm hoping, you know, circling back around, there's places to increase that. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Um, Springer, I think those are your last two applications. So it, it, if you want to kind of address anything or comment, feel free to. Um, really just, you know, devil weed is one of those species that you contemplate just dropping all of your other work to deal with. It's still, we think, in a very strong probability we can eradicate it, but it's a horrible weed and very, very dispersible. Um, the county has, um, is most likely going to fund us for 25000 Um, It's pretty set that, that we'll get that amount and we'll need to match it. So I would really like to um, if we can bump this one up to 25, that would be a, a very helpful amount to have. That would get us close to our $55,000 goal between the two agencies. Is HDOA the lead agency on the response? And if so, do they have any comments? I would... Jointly, sorry, go ahead, Darcy. I would rate this as an equally shared response. Although in terms of effort, we only have one, uh, we, we lost 50% of our underground capacity. <laughs> um, uh, so the department supports, especially the, the chromolina work here. Um, uh, I wanna emphasize like Springer, I think that there is a good chance that of eradication but we need to be mindful of in this case that um, we've got a lot more disturbed land um, and, and it relates back to um, Mark Thorne's proposal with um, uh, all the Kikuyu getting killed off by two-line spittlebug. That opens up a lot of area, um, especially given uh, the, the kind of areas we found, um, well, where Springer first found devil weed on in Hilo side on the, the bike tracks. So uh, there's some motocross tracks, not bike tracks, I should say. Uh, so there's some potential for easy vectoring to some of these rangeland habitats that we're so worried about. Um, so th this, I, I, would, I would support bumping up um, uh, the proposal to match uh, the county funding. Yeah. Uh, especially since um, uh, our operating costs um, for Cromolina Odorata control um, have also been cut uh, on the department side uh, this fiscal year. So we will have, um, we have enough to largely get by with what we need, but that's with the forecasted infestations that we've delimited so far. Thanks, Darcy. I know we're moving in the wrong direction, but does it make sense for time's sake to just make that change now? I won't argue that. I want to come back. I mean, we're nearing the end where we have to start doing this anyways. Um, it might be nice to see what's left over because there are like higher scoring projects that also are marked for increase. Um, but I've also marked Springer's with, with that note. Okay, let's just make it through them all then. Okay. Okay, uh, all right, next one is a proposal, another algae proposal for algae interactions. Um, hold on just a sec again, let me get through. Okay, um, so this proposal's um, for two closely related invasive green algae in Hawaii that have been out competing native corals and seagrasses, but they have different morphology and species traits. So the project aims at understanding how to best manage these species at different depths um, where they are both found to be abundant. Um, so it's just using some different control methods and different proportions of, I think it's hydrogen peroxide, um, and Celia, you can totally correct me if I'm wrong on that. 
so this project we've um funded a similar project in the past uh, let me highlight this so the requested amount was a little over 65,000. It scored a 26 with a recommended amount of just over 18,000. Um, comments, discussion from members? Um, maybe uh, Division of Aquatic Resources folks, do you have any comments on maybe what a, uh, the priority of this project? Um, I guess I'd just like to, if, if Celia is still on, see what she can do with this amount of funds. But um, I would say that it, this is a continued, so this is the second year of a two-year project, and um, this funding would really help them finish up the data collection, but I'm sure Celia can speak mo more to that. Celia is not here, but Scott Vanderberg says he can answer questions for her. Yeah, great, Scott. Why don't you talk about it a little bit? Uh, aloha, uh, I'm Scott. And um, yeah, I'm a co-author on this proposal. And uh, we've been doing our work on the South Shore uh, so far, but uh, we're looking to expand it into other sites. Uh, our coastline here in Hawaii is very heterogeneic and so there's always differences at, at each site and uh, figuring out how to deal with some of these very widespread uh, invasive uh, algae uh, would uh, be very useful uh, for future uh, protection of the reefs. And so uh, we're just proposing uh, to increase our sites and increase our depth readings and uh, ranges. So, um, uh, and yeah, we're, we were looking to uh, fund a grad student to do research next year, uh, but uh, with the available funds, we'd probably uh, put, just put it into materials and supplies uh, and operating costs. So uh, yeah, feel free to ask more questions if you have. Thanks, Scott. I guess with this amount, um what would be cut the the personnel like the graduate student research position uh, but we would be able to uh, get volunteer help uh, and uh, we we're in close collaboration with the uh, scientific diving instruction program at uh and so uh during like training sessions we could also uh recruit volunteer help and stuff like that so and we're also closely working with uh, Division of Aquatic Resources as well. And they, they've been a great help so far. So. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, so recommending just keeping that amount as is. I think so. There aren't a lot of the uh, aquatic proposals. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we still have to circle back on um, the other proposal from Dr. Smith once we get through this initial discussion. Okay, I'm going to move forward. The next one is a Koki control proposal. So this one's looking, um, it's doing research into that 16% citric acid control for koki frogs. Um, it's, I guess, been some, uh, okay, let me just read what I wrote so I don't muddle it at this stage in the game. Um, so the proposed research is set to determine whether there are population level differences in the effectiveness of citric acid to control koki frog. Um, it's been initially controlled with 16% citric acid solution since 2002. Um, and this was, the solution was determined to be uh, nearly 100% at killing cokies in the lab at the time. Um, many cokie populations have been repeatedly treated with citric acid for the past 20 years without successful eradication. Our study will investigate whether cokie populations, especially those that have not been repeatedly have been repeatedly treated um, are evolving resistance 
or I think it's have been repeatedly treated our evolving resistance to citric acid as a method of control and whether a different percentage of citric acid solution would be more effective. Um, so that's, mm -hmm. I was just going to jump into the questions, and this actually isn't for the applicant, but is for the people doing coqui frogs. Are you noticing a decline in efficacy of citric acid? Is that becoming a problem? Maybe Adam? I think you probably killed the most coqui on here. <laughs> Or Elizabeth, she might be able to answer that question. And I guess I would also like to point out that it's far under the threshold. So unless, you know, I hear a Koki uh, control person say, we absolutely need this, I'd say zero it out. I think it's a legitimate question to be asked, Rob. The, the real question is, in the field, are, are the frogs getting They were completely shut down. Through. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't think that's the yeah, answer. We're all excited. You know. Sorry, Darcy, it's a little difficult. Actually, we got a this year, so we can put that on the couch. It's you know, last year. Get our couch, maybe in a month or so, we got last year. Um, last year, that's how long I'm sure we need to mute. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Go you. ahead, Darcy. <laughs> Tez, unmuted again. Yeah, um, yeah, I can, I can weigh in a little bit. Sorry, I think Adam was called off to a different call. Um, and uh, what I, I think, you know, and I'm because I, I haven't been doing the field stuff, I actually think MISC is using a lower percentage of citric acid to make it go farther. I actually think it would be super helpful to look at this question because citric acid is such a huge cost of control, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for the work that we're doing. And well, I, I'm not familiar with the details of this particular proposal. Um, I just think that looking at the efficacy of that could really be cost effective. And if they're not asking for very much, it's a small ask in terms of, of a proposal. So I, you know, I would just think it could be helpful statewide to really look into this question. Yeah, there's also a scalability aspect to it. Um, so they are asking for at least half of their requested amount. Right now we're only covering 27% of it. So it, it would be kind of a push for us to get to that, that level to support that project and from what the applicant says, make it viable. Yeah, it's not a very big ask overall. Like Ms. Spins, half of, of, if you have a hundred, that basically if you have a hundred, if you have a million dollar budget for Koki control, almost half of that goes to Citric. So asking for 35,000 to look into the efficacy of what we're using, I, you know, I don't know if it could be looking at not only are the frogs um, becoming, um, you know, uh, gaining pesticide resistance to it, but also could it look at, um, could it look at lower levels? Yeah, I, I would agree with Taya. Um, the issue I think isn't whether resistance is being developed. I think the, the issue that needs to be examined is if the dose rates that are actually used in the field versus what was tested in the lab setting um, are having an effective and measurable kill rate on coqui frogs. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, once that, occurs, once that question is answered, then there's a whole lot of tough decisions that are going to have to be made if, uh, again, going back on what Taya said on cost, if, if you're using a lower level percentage level and it's not being effective, then you're just spending a lot of money for nothing. And we need to rethink our control programs. And it's been, two, it's been what? a long time since any research has been done on coqui frogs, so I think it's time. Is Dr. Beard available to comment on the scalability question? Yeah, I'm here. Karen, how are you? Good, hi everybody. Um, 
just a, one comment. In the proposal, we talked about looking at 0, 8%, 16, and 24%. So we were going to look at a range of percentages across a bunch of different populations to see if we can use lower percentages or if we have to use higher percentages. Um, yeah, so um, because we're not on island, I think it would be hard to do what we're, we were proposing for 9,000. Um, I think we could make a good go of it at the 50%. So at like 17 or 18. Just because we have to go over there and <laughs> we were just so um, be hard for us to cut it down to nine. Well, what I'm hearing is there there's potentially a lot of value in this work. Um, and that's not going to yeah, I, make I a think difference in our, our shortfall. So do we want to raise it to the 50%? I would like to see it raised primarily because um, the results of Dr. Beard's work will dictate a lot of our future control actions on Koki Frog. Okay. And to jump ahead, um, there's uh, looking in the chat, there's someone basically stating, Dr. Peroy is stating that. Um, he'd be happy to, uh, he, he, uh, he could give up his money, request for SciCat file control for other project needs. Oh, wow. Thank you. Um, I was actually going to recommend not funding it anyway, <laughs> but we can talk about that when we get there. You are jumping the gun there. Um, okay, so just for reference, uh, if we filled this at, at 50% of the total requested, that is, I mean, it's, it's a little under 18,000. So that would be, I mean, doubling what the recommended amount is at the moment. Um, I'm only hearing support and need for this proposal um, and funding this application. And I'm happy to hear other comments from folks. If for now we can mark it for an increase and I'll put that 17, that just under 18K as a, as a talking point for when we circle back around. But just a note, we're gonna have to like move through everything really fast when we go through the second round. So this is kind of the bulk of the discussion we're gonna have. Okay, I'm gonna highlight and then we will keep moving. Um, the next one is a proposal um, for an economic analysis of biofouling by Donna Lee. So she's put out quite a few um, economic analysis on different invasive species and impacts of an invasive species um, to different sectors. So this is a, a proposal. She, I think we could actually talk about these proposals together. So there's one for biofouling and there's one for little fire ant, just to cut down on time. The requested amount is for pretty much the same. Um, the biofouling one scored a little bit higher. Um, and from that, we get a recommended amount for the biofouling at um, just over 15,000. And the little fire ant one, sorry, let me highlight it just for the ease of it. Uh, this one right here is just under 14,000. So I think we should just talk about these together. Um, that would be, you know, just under 30K for funding both of these proposals. Um, discussion from members, questions? Um, I, I know some of the members here are, you know, these are priorities for them. So if you wanna talk to that, Feel free. Uh, Chelsea, this is Natalie. Um, I can't speak to the little fire ant one, um, but for the biofouling one, um, I think we're in support of that. Um, just to provide a little background for um, everyone else, it's uh, the project would be really timely right now. Um, there's currently um, 
in all of in-water cleaning is prohibited in, in state waters. And VITA, the Vessel Incidental Discharge Act, um, will be completely changing that um, and will allow in-water cleaning to occur in Hawaii. So it's really essential for us to understand how this completely new regime is going to work here. Um, the feasibility as well as um, a cost benefit assessment, which is what this um, project is proposing to do. Um, in terms of scalability, I am not too sure what would be um, able to be accomplished uh, with that um, recommended amount. So I, I think I saw uh, Donna on the, the call. Maybe she's able to speak to that a little bit. Or Christy, too, if you have anything else to. Donna is here. So if um, yeah, is there are questions for her regarding scalability, I think she is free to comment right now. Yeah. Can anybody hear me? Yep. OK. Um, yeah, I can do it for, you know, I can do a little bit of work for the amount um, recommended, but I'm going to ask for a bump up, if possible, to about um, 50,000 for both together combined. Just to get a little farther and provide, you know, more detail, just because these are both, you know, on the ground projects running right now. Um, does anybody want to speak, um, either a member or even an applicant that's here to you know, having numbers for Little Fire Ant. I know we have, um, we use that number um, 200 million per year on Hawaii Island alone. Um, so maybe you could just speak to what this economic analysis would provide, Donna. For the Little Fire Ant? Yeah. Well, um, it has to do with, you know, the ongoing eradication effort. And there's always pushback on, oh, it, eradication is too expensive. We can't afford it and therefore we shouldn't do it. And so this speaks to the effort of undertaking eradication at its cost um, and whether or not it's long-term successful, you know, if the ants come back or if a new one's introduced, was it still beneficial in the long run to continue to attempt eradication? And so that's kind of what I wanted to put out. So we have ongoing eradication on Maui and, um, They'd like to keep eradicating ants. And I would just like to look if you if you said, okay, you're no longer allowed to eradicate, but you only can manage the damages or mitigate, you know, really what's that going to cost? So we, if you're saving money on the one hand, what's it going to cost on the other hand in terms of damages or long-term um, mitigation costs? And I think MISC was also a collaborator in this um, project. So maybe they can weigh in again as well on this one. And I think uh, Adam is back on. Adam there, or Taya, or Brooke. <laughs> I don't know if Adam's, Adam's able there, but um, obviously any work to support the, the Little Fire Ant project is super valuable and um, and Donna does great work in terms of providing the, the economic analysis of the, of the value and the cost of these different projects, which our funders always look to for because it's so expensive. But, but you know, the cost may be expensive, but the, but the cost benefit analysis is really helpful to showing the value of that work. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Taya. I'm just thinking about timeliness, and, and it sounds like this is a good time to work on something for biofouling. Um, but I know you, this is looking, you know, specifically at Nahiko and the aerial control and taking that into consideration, which is, you know, relatively new. It, is the timeliness right for that economic analysis for LFA right now? Or maybe could this be something put off to another year so we could focus that funding on biofouling? Well, wow, those are two really different. <laughs> <laughs> two different projects and only Donna can answer uh, uh, you know, what she's capable of doing within within one year. I don't know what her overall resources are doing or, oh, yeah. or what that her overall resources are. Yeah. 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 
yeah, I, I can't, I can't provide good information on that. Oh yeah, so that was directed at Donna, but thank you, Taya, for for adding information for the little fire ant. Well, I think LFA is timely too because um, Brooke has just been gathering lots and lots of data that um, could be brought into the economic analysis between, you know, during the fiscal year. So, I mean, I think it would benefit for sure LFA on Maui and then any of the islands where they would like to attempt eradication for a, a new incurring species and need to argue for money just to be able to show the methodology for demonstrating that there are, it is expensive, but the long-term benefits, you know, potentially could exceed the short-term costs. Yeah, I guess what I was getting at is, you know, we can't really call that site eradicated yet, but I also am not, you know, super honed into your methodology. So maybe that you're able to come up with uh, initial assessment that, you know, does speak to, you know, the benefits of an eradication effort versus no management at all. Right. Well, they use very strict definition before they call it area eradicated. So I'll, I, will, I would use that, those definitions too, but just, you know, not having any detection for several years of ant, um, there's a lot of benefit to that, whether or not you call it eradicated, just the effort they put forth and the continuous monitoring. I think there's a lot of value there that maybe is underestimated if you don't do the analysis. So um, I don't know if it could be put off. I mean, that's the problem is putting it off you know, all the time when there's an opportunity to, to get rid of a species you put it off and then it, sometimes it's too late to go back or much more costly. Yeah, um, go ahead, Adam. I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, it, it, Donna has a really good point. I mean, it is a good time. Sorry, can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay, um, I was just saying that Donna has a good point about um, like we are doing a huge survey effort in Nihiku, which is, the biggest LFA infestation that's ever been tackled in Hawaii, to my knowledge. And currently it seems very promising, but putting some more, um, especially third party, you know, not scrutiny, but just analysis into that effort would be really valuable. So I'm just advocating for that. And it sounded like, sorry, I had to step off for a second, but it sounded like there was another question for me about um citric acid with cokey frogs the short answer is it still works <laughs> okay I, I, I yeah i don't know if there was a more specific question it looks like the percent we're using 14 percent is what we're using right now well within the label restrictions and uh yeah it's still very effective i think we resolved that one so i don't want to i don't want to go backwards here um yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to take up more time. Um, and I don't know that we're prepared to um, uh, double the request uh, of what we currently have for the recommended funding. So I'm wondering if we just need to select one of those and come up with the amount if we want one of the economic studies done. I'm not sure I see us having the funds to do both. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what I was trying to assess um but it seems like there's needs on either side so it, it's a difficult mm -hmm. decision um anything anything from members any recommendations the applicant is asking for a combined total of like a minimum of 50k to support both those Kat right. um, has his hand raised i'd like to hear what he has to say Oh yeah, and Adam, let me take your hand down. Yeah, go ahead, Cass. Cass? Oh, you were unmuted for a millisecond there, Cass. Maybe push it again. There, there we go. go. Sorry. 
I was thinking maybe we can finish with uh, this proposal first and then I've got, I can ask some questions rather than midstream. Go ahead. No, I'm, I was saying, uh, could we finish with the proposal that you were discussing now? Uh -oh. And after that has completed, before the next proposal, I could ask some questions then. Okay. Um, okay. Sure. So you don't have a, you didn't have input on the LFA economic study. I take it. That's what no, I thought. No, there were broader, there were broader questions. Okay. Um, all right. So do, what do team members feel about this? I mean, I, I'm not getting a strong signal from any of the other members. So um, I guess I would just um, I, go I, ahead, Darcy. I think this, um, there's a series of of proposals that are in the lower rated category here that I find are problematic because they they help inform our decisions based upon some of our larger, more expensive control actions. Um, and, and I think that's in that's in part because of the the criteria that we are using to evaluate these projects. So um, I, I understand, I, I didn't have a chance to read the, the aquatic portion, but um, I, I see the same, this issue popping up with the LFA where I, I, I wouldn't wanna see it not funded because I want senior decisions in terms of our management of little fire ant populations or any kind of eradication project that we engage in. But, um, uh, it, 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 there, there has to be, you know, there needs to be a discussion on what, on what the costs and where, where those kinds of funds come from if, if we're gonna make these decisions to, to keep it on at the docket. So I, uh, I think it may be something that we don't, we're not able to adequately address here, but we should think about for the next, uh, next year, how we, how we prioritize some of the funding requests. I'd like to see, I'd like to see the math that, um, that's so, behind these numbers. Cass, because I think Chelsea went over the, the scoring system at the beginning of the meeting. I was listening and I didn't, uh, I didn't get what she said. And I don't know that we have time to review it, but basically they're scored. Can I, can I submit testimony afterwards, like after this meeting to the, to the working group? In fact, there is a, there is a, there is an agenda item cast after um, uh, we make it through the proposals for testimony, and you can offer testimony at that point. Oh well, actually, I'd like to submit some written testimony, but later. That's fine too. I think Chelsea. Yeah, um, there's an opportunity to submit testimony because the council has to approve this recommended budget. Um, so I'll put out a meeting packet and announcement for that meeting, and that's a chance to submit public testimony for that meeting. Okay. Um, and we'll read that out at that council meeting too. So that's an opportunity. It's too late for this meeting. It has to be 24 hours in advance, but there is time for public comments, hopefully at the end. <laughs> no problems. I would like you to go through the math though, because I don't quite understand how we've gotten to these numbers. To the it doesn't have to be... It could be later, could be now. I don't, I don't, I just need to know how the, how does the math work? Yeah, uh, yeah, I can pull up, actually it's in a slide from an older presentation, the, the, the actual formula that's used. So maybe when we take a break, I can pull that up and show folks what that looks like. Um, Cause what we go over is just kind of the general formula, how those scores are inputted into the recommended amount along with what was requested and the total available. Yeah, because the way I read it is nobody can get what they ask for and the best you can hope for is about 60% of what you ask for. But it's a, like a millennial thing. If you get a really crap score, you still get a prize. And I don't know whether that's a good way to, I mean, basically what that's doing is it's stressing all the other projects by cutting them back to a point where it's doubtful that they can be successful. And no one's yeah. making the hard decisions to say, well, we can't, we can't fund anything that's scored under, I don't know, 
come up with a number, 25 or whatever. Um, yeah. This, and like we said, like a strange way of doing it. Yeah, no scoring system is perfect. And that's part of the reason we have this really transparent conversation. So not only members can advocate to up proposal amounts, but also applicants and members of the public, if they want, can advocate for certain projects um, and make it known that it's a priority. Um, because yeah, the priority scoring um, is not a perfect system. And a lot of projects we each see that are relevant and priorities don't always score high up, but we can have those conversations here um, and, and happy to do that. And, and Cass, we're just going to have to go over that at a later time because we're really, we need to get through these all. And I understand that um, uh, you would like to understand the, the, the math behind it. And we'll go over that with you for sure. But we really need to get going on this right I now. I appreciate that. And there's no hurry. It's not like it's, I need an answer now, but I would like, I would like to ask the questions and get the answers at some point. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And, and folks that have my email, if you're interested in that, we, we can do like a more detailed discussion about this spreadsheet for folks. I'm happy to do that. Okay, so um, we need to make a decision about these economic analyses and whether we can afford, you know, $50,000 in our budget for doing both of these. I'm hearing that this is really important information that needs to be collected and analyzed in order for some of our priority projects to continue to operate in the long term. Um, I don't really like looking at these proposals at the end and increasing the amount when we're already short, but um, I would be comfortable moving forward with the existing funding level um, and- Let's do that, Rob. Okay. Thank you, Darcy. Okay, and that's for Little Fire Ant also. Yes, the recommendation. correct. Got yep. it. We need to get beyond those two proposals. Okay, next one we have, um, I'll let, I'll hand it over to Layla. Yeah, I'll this proposal. Simple. Withdrawn, oh, withdrawn. Oh, withdrawn, <laughs> okay, out. well, great, zero out. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Mike, I was ready to fight for you. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mike. Okay, next one, we're moving into one of the other uh, mosquito proposals from Cynthia King. Um, and this was discussed as one of the higher priorities amongst the mosquito proposals. Um, Leila, you wanna give a brief summary? Um, yeah, uh, this proposal is um, the third proposal for um, the incompatible insect technique using Wolbachia and the applicant notes that neither DNR or DOH have uh, dedicated staff to work towards the shared goal of uh, making the incompatible, incompatible insect technique using Volvacia a viable tool for Hawaii. And this re request will provide funds for 100% FDE position to assist DLNR and, DO and DOH with technical planning, compliance, communication, logistical support, and data management. And yeah, so it's 100% um, for supporting a position. And yeah, so and so far, where are we with the... So uh, the requested amount was 90,000, about 90,000. And currently the, the proposed amount for the applicant is at about 20,000. So it's... 23% field. And I think the applicant is still with us. Yes, and I'm happy to speak or answer questions. Um, sorry, this is Cynthia. Uh, I had a question for Chelsea. Are you tracking um, the combined mosquito total and comparing it to previous years to see how far off uh, we were from funding this priority in previous years, just for a little context? Um, yeah, so that's right here in the column um, V4 right here. Um, but it's a little bit hard to track that over years because I know proposal, I know Lainey had a proposal last year that was withdrawn because she got funding from another source. Um, so it's not super mm -hmm. even sure. across. Um, but you can see what was funded last year. And I think that was just a single proposal, maybe Taya's proposal. I, 
think that's the case because I think two years ago we, you know, we had close to $150,000 of FISC funds for various projects. Um, so I guess I just want to convey that there are so many moving parts to this project that it's hard to even convey. And we're essentially trying to lay the framework and build capacity for, for Hawaii to use IIT and it's a brand new tool for conservation and for health, public health. And there are literally no staff on the state side um, that are dedicated to working on this. Um, just se several folks doing it on top of their existing workloads. And this is something that is supposed to be one of our highest priorities. So it's just really essential that we be able to, to hire a position that could be dedicated to the planning and operations for this because we're just getting off the ground and we won't get off the ground unless we are able to staff up. And aside from there being a huge workload, which, which Taya can speak to, I mean, she knows it, um, you know, we're involved in planning with federal partners and there are circumstances where NGOs can't be present or participate. So for example, Taya hasn't been able to participate in some of um, the compliance um, meetings that we've had and, and that will continue to be the case. So I think there's a really clear need to have a separate state position to complement the current planning efforts. Um, and there's more than enough work for it. And you know, we've been doing this for five years on a, sh on a shoestring and we, knew we, we really need to move faster if we're gonna stand a chance of getting this on the ground before our most endangered forest birds go to extinct. And I'm, I'm not the best person to speak to that, but we are literally racing time right now with climate change and these mosquitoes and the numbers um, that we're getting in surveys um, on Maui and Kauai. And as much as I don't wanna see any other projects, you know, treading water or going backwards, I do believe that um, this need at this time supersedes our want to make inroads towards some of the more established invasives um, on islands where they're widely established, don't get me wrong, not incipient infestations, because um, those are also really time sensitive. So um, just making the plug that in five years, we might not be asking for funding because if we don't do it now, we're not gonna have those forest birds. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Cynthia. You have um, the scalability 50%. Would 50% still be? Um, I think 50% would make it possible. I mean, we just have to try to, to beg funds from other sources to fill that. We don't, we don't have those um, right now. Um, so, but if it's, you know, what it's at right now, I just, I don't know how we can bridge that. Well, I'd like to get it um, to, at the very least, 50%, even if that means cutting proposals below it entirely. Um, I'm not sure why this ranked out so low um, when it's a very clear state priority. Um, and I think that I, you know, other members of the team would, would uh, agree with me there. If not, please speak up. Um, so I would suggest uh, moving it at least to the 50% level, if not more, and then, um, you know, quickly looking at some of these below it and seeing if we can't free up the funds to get it to a level so that this project can move forward because of the urgency. Okay, I have it marked to increase I, it. Um, so maybe let's I support just- support that, Rob. Yeah. We, we have a, a raised hand too from uh, Lincoln Wells. I don't know if we have time. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, it's small, right just here from the Hawaii Department, Department of Health. Um, yeah, this this position we also think is really key. Um, it's kind of outlined in the proposal to be helping both uh, DLNR and um, Department of Health get some of our, our projects up and going. So I just kind of wanted to reiterate our support as well for it. Thanks, Lincoln. Okay, well, yeah, let's... That's... So let's, let's get it there. If, if we are able to free up any more resources, maybe we can pad a little bit more. I think we've identified a few that we'd kind of like to get increased yep sounds good okay okay the next one is a um creating um some repositories um sorry let me use the correct word okay so um creating new reservoirs for kind of getting the the biocontrol agent uh stra for strawberry guava tectococcus ovatus um, kind of going in these places where we can can pull it from to distribute across the islands. Um, so it's creating different reservoirs across the state. Uh, the requested amount is for 100,000. 
uh, it scored 20 and that puts it at a recommended amount of um, just over 21,000. Are there any discussion? Um, Rob, you have any thoughts on this proposal? Yeah, so, um, well, I think this is a really important activity to support the wide scale suppression of strawberry guava. I think that we can work with collaborators and make some headway on this without uh, funding. I know Andy will be bummed, but we'll make it happen. I, I think this also can be zeroed out. Um, uh, Technococcus distribution, uh, being delayed even a year won't affect things too much. And I think there are other priorities that can better use the funding. Um, so I, re I recommend zeroing it out. Okay, any, any disagreements from members? And the department can support um, in some capacity uh, producing uh, plant uh, Tectococcus infected uh, material for distribution. Great. Yeah, Great. I think Rob and Darcy. Um, just to move on, I'm going to zero that one out. And we discussed this. We'll circle back to the LFA economic analysis and our last mosquito proposal from Department of Health. Um, this is mosquito suppression. I'll hand it over to Layla to just provide a summary on that. Yeah, so this is the last proposal is from Gray Simmons and the Department of Health. And this proposal uh, seeks funding to uh, contract out an environmental assessment and an accompanying co cultural impact analysis to share um, to state and federal specific specifications to allow for the progression of the Wolbachia based um, uh, insect incompatible and the IIT project. And this is 100% goes to this contractual work um, for the EA and for the CIA. And the proposal requested 160,000 and it currently um, the proposed funding is at 32,000. So it's at 21% fill. Yeah, so just to provide a little bit of background, there's EAs and CIAs currently um, in motion for two specific locations uh, at the highest elevations on both Maui and Kauai. Um, this is an expanded EA statewide for the three um, public health and environmental species of most concern. So 80s Egypt die, 80s albopictus, and Culex concafasiatus. Um, it's definitely a, a high priority for us to, to get these uh, EAs and the uh, CIA going. Um, we at the Department of Health have kind of, uh, I guess, voluntarily kind of taken a backseat to some of the QLX projects as the situation with the native birds um, is really dire. But we uh, are in some ways actually even closer to being able to implement the tool um, with uh, the, the mosquito products themselves being registered um, for use within Hawaii within the, the coming months. Um, so getting the, the EAs done, and then we're also working with Department of Agriculture on getting them uh, the import permit. Those are kind of the last two bureaucratic hurdles before the mosquitoes could come back into the state and we could start doing releases. Um, I think, we are really hoping to be able to get up to 50% for this as well. I think that maybe if we went down to 45%, we could make that work. Um, but yeah, that's kind of kind of what we're looking at. And then uh, supplementing the rest with uh, the branches uh, uh, general funds. Well, I think that I would like to support increasing if possible for able because it's a really necessary position to move the project forward and you know they really need to get the EAs done to do this. So, and it seems like this project is one of their highest priorities as well. Yeah, agreed. Can we go ahead and bump that up? Are people on board with that? Yes, I think this is a great example of a proposal that can score low um, 
just due to the parameters of the scoring system. And yet this is why we hold the working group meetings to hear more and, and evaluate as a, as a committee um, and hear from the agencies about what their priorities are directly. Cause sometimes that isn't reflected in our scoring system. So I, I definitely appreciate this. Thanks, Christy. So if we, um, Lincoln said it, it could be as low as 45%, but um, hopefully 50, 45% of the requested amount is um, 72,000. Um, so that would be a significant in increase to what we're working with right, right now. Um, I wonder if we can go back and look at the origin that at the first proposals um, that we had, and maybe we can see them all together. Well, okay. We, we only have a couple more. Should we make it through all of them before going to the top? Yep. Let's do that. Let's get let's, through let's these it. last three. Okay. Um, I have it highlighted. Um, so the next one is aerial biocontrol distribution. Again, this is another um, technique for distributing the strawberry guava biocontrol agent um, across the islands. Uh, so it's using helicopter and capsules to kind of dump the, the agent onto the canopies of strawberry guava forest. Um, the requested amount is a little over 52,000. It scored 19. The recommended amount is um, $10,671. Chelsea, was this the one that he offered to yeah, he uh, withdraw? And, and if he didn't offer to withdraw, I would recommend zeroing it out for the same reasons for um, the Cullison proposal. Okay, let me just make sure I'm hearing everybody's comments. So I think there was some overlap. Um, did anybody else have comments about this proposal? Ryan withdrew it. He he offered to um, he in the chat. He said, "I will, mm -hmm. given the low score, it's not the end of the world if it gets cut out right to help give money to other projects." Okay. <clears throat> everybody okay with that? Yep. All right. Um, thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. Um, our second to last one is a project for rat lungworm. I'll pass it over to Layla. Yes, um, this project, the applicant notes that the wild rat populations in Hawaii play a key role in the transmission of rat and lungworm disease to humans and animals. However, there is uh, information lacking. Um, and um, this proposal basically seeks funds to understand the differences in rat infestation levels on our four main populated islands and see how these infections relate to rat abundance. Uh, this research could help to identify how in intensively rats should be controlled to reduce the, land, uh, the rat landworm disease in an area. And this proposal ask for a little bit less than 90,000. And um, the current recommended funding is at 18,000. So it's 21% filled. And I think the applicant was um, here earlier. Um, I don't know if the working group members have any comments before we ask the applicant to comment. Yeah, maybe just open it up to Department of Health or rep over there, Grace, if, if she has any comments on, you know, the priority of this project for the department. I'm sorry, who was that question for, um, Chelsea? Sorry. Sorry, Grace, that was for you. I just wondered oh, okay. if you had any thoughts about, um, you know, the priority for the department and, and having this project. This is what our one of our highest priorities, and I think that you know Lincoln's been working um, exceptionally hard with Cynthia and the and Ted and the rest of the um, um, mosquito working group to bring this 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's for the route. I'm so sorry. I was talking with Lincoln earlier. I'm so sorry. I love that you're in the same room, though. So that's yeah. helpful. <laughs> okay. So this is about the rat lung worm. Yes. Yes. Forgive me. I. No I... problem. Okay, so is this a priority? At this point, it really has kind of, kind of fallen off the charts for us. We haven't, um, you know, because of so many other things, um, this has kind of fallen on the wayside. We haven't seen very many cases. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Grace. Um, any other comments or questions from the members? Can I, I think- comment on this? Um, sorry, I don't know who that was, um, but Janice, you want to go ahead? Oh, no, whoever that was can go first. Yeah, this is Israel. I, uh, I submitted this application. And so this is looking at, uh, it's a first step to establish some standardized sampling protocols of the rat lungworm across the islands. We've been sampling over seasons on the big island and it's helped to inform the public as well as future research. And so looking across the islands, well, we could uh, understand those abundances of rat lungworm in areas, especially Maui uh, at the moment, because that's a spike in cases. And with some of the recent documented uh, pet mortalities as well to rat lungworm. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a growing uh, spiking abundance of rat lungworm across the islands, but there has been no, no efforts to actually document uh, document the parasite. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll just comment here from the department, from at least from my perspective of the Department of Health. I think that yeah, having a better understanding of some of the reservoirs um, could could potentially be helpful. You know, I think that we have a pretty clear understanding of how the disease uh, spreads in human cases and that the laboratory reporting system for that is good. So that we're able to identify human cases, but yeah, uh, yeah, I kind of agree with Israel here about um, the potential for the parasite to be uh, infecting like other species within the state as well. Great, thank you, Lincoln. Um, Janice, did you have a comment or a question still? Oh, I was just going to say that I do think it's important information to have. Okay, why don't we, um, at, at this stage in the spreadsheet, why don't we keep the recommended amount as is? Um, happy to hear any other thoughts. Yeah, um, maybe it might be good uh, to revisit where we are with the the balance, Chelsea. Yep. Um, I mean, has everything been redis- redistributed or how? Or... Yep. Um, no. So we're only working off of column K again. So what we're showing is that we have, you know, a little under fifty six thousand to add to those budgets that we highlighted so far. Okay. So not so not a huge chunk. Yeah, that's not a huge. I'd like to see more um, available. I'm wondering if um, uh, we might be able to cut proposals uh, below that we des- discussed before before we realized how um, excruciating this was going to be. Um, and um, you know, I, I would like to suggest um, you know a couple, or we could um, just say everything you know, below the lane box gets zeroed out unless a um, committee member has one proposal there they would like to make the call for considering how short we are. Does that seem like a reasonable way to approach it? Yeah, I, we do have one more proposal that kind of fell. It, it wasn't one of the lowest scoring proposals and it didn't have a scalability issue. So that's this, um, to me, the little fire ant. Proposal. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's no problem. It's it's kind of lost in this highlighted field right now. So maybe let's just go over that, and then Rob, definitely let's let's take that up and something along that lines into consideration is fine. Um, so Leila, uh, if you want to just give a summary of that one. Yes. And so this proposal um, is um, looking to conduct research on an adventive wasp or a sema minutissima. Uh, that was documented in 2020, and the wasp is a parasite of LFA and Fedole uh, megacephala. There is evidence that the wasp has been established uh, on the island of Hawaii. 
since uh, 2019, and the main goal is to survey the spread of and density of this um, Atlantic wasp in Hawaii Island and to quantify the impact of this wasp on LFA and Fedode um, population densities. Um, and this is to fund a postdoc and a technician, less uh, partial FTEs and travel costs and contractual services for uh, travel for collaborators. And this proposal requested as, uh, a little bit less than 35,000. And the current recommended amount is um, a little bit over 12,000. So it's 16% filled. And with that, if there is any I, discussion. I recommend zeroing out this proposal. Or a SEMA minute will not lead to any significant control of little fire ant. The department and our collaborators already assessed it once it was first identified. Okay. okay. Thanks, Darcy. Um, I think we should just make sure, I mean, we've given all the applicants kind of equal ability to respond. So maybe uh, if the applicant is here, <laughs> sorry. Hi, yes, I'm here. <laughs> um, thank you, I appreciate the time to talk about my proposal a little bit. Um, I have been in talks with people in the, the Fire Ant Lab and also a collaborator at UC Riverside who um, helped uh, discover the parasitoid establishment on Big Island. And um, perhaps uh, the Department of Ag has some data that we haven't seen, and I would be very interested in that. And we don't know. Um, I thought I was under the understand, I was under the impression that we don't know if this wasp, if reared in large numbers, could impact um, LFA populations. Uh, importantly, though, we also don't know how far it is spread and at what densities all around the Big Island. So with a reduction in funding, we would still at least be able to have a tech for a little bit to do some surveys on Big Island and get an idea of the spread and establishment. Um, we also did hope to monitor other islands, and we have some other collaborators that might be willing to help us, but of course, with limited funding, um, that would be more difficult at this time. But a reduction in funding at the proposed amount currently would um, would at least allow us to do some baseline surveys of the WASP around Big Island. I'd be happy to discuss um, my conversations with part, our partners with you at a later date and time. My recommendation to zero out funding is more about availability of funds and other higher priorities that I see for funding at this point in time. Yeah, thank you, Ellen, and, and thank you, Darcy. And um, I, I think with the gaps we're seeing with the Hawaii Ant Lab, um, I would rather see that money put towards the Hawaii Ant Lab for this year, just knowing that there's going to be a shortfall in other funds. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that, but I would encourage the applicant to reaching out to HDOA and seeing if, uh, you know, there isn't capacity to work together in the future and uh, perhaps a future proposal even. Okay, any, any more discussion or opposition to zeroing out this proposal from members? Okay. Okay, we've made it through. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Um, you know, we're behind and I would just say, if you need to take a break, you know, just turn off your mic and camera and, and take a break as you need. Um, but right now we're just gonna power through kind of this second overview where we're really making those increases or decreases or zeroing out and we need to keep the conversation um, rolling. Um, so we had the time to, have applicants respond. That doesn't mean applicants can't respond in any way, but it's just gonna, we're gonna have to move through this pretty fast because we gotta end at, at 4.30 today. And I'm still nervous, like this thing is just gonna shut down on me again. Um, so why don't we start with, okay, for um, this one right here, which was 
um, talking about uh, diagnostic needs. And, and we did have a note, Mike hadn't joined us yet. I think he's still here. Um, Mike, we just had a question on, on the need for this one. And I'm not sure if you, I don't even know, I'm pretty sure you evaluated this proposal and I can go back in time and just kind of read you a summary. Um, no, I, I, I know this proposal. I remember it. Um, I liked it. Um, it's one of the sort of the few agricultural ones that are here, but I'm also partial to pathogens. Uh, I, I, you know, and I think Janae is on as well to, to discuss any questions, but did you have any specific questions or um, I was a fan, but, you know, obviously I recognize it didn't score as well as some others. Uh, yeah, it looks like Janae is here. Uh, yeah, but I'm happy to ask, answer any questions or comment or offer comments, but Probably Janae is much better. I'm I'm all in favor of getting more diagnostic capacity in the state, and shrimp is uh, in aquaculture in general is an important industry here. So, uh, just maybe a quick question: If if a shrimp farmer has an outbreak of a disease currently, is there a place uh, available for them to take samples to get it diagnosed? Um, it seems like that would be a regular um, part of uh, uh, um, operations. Um, surveillance for the shrimp. And I'm just wondering how it relates to um, biosecurity in the state specifically. Um, I can answer that. Uh, can you guys all hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so, you know, this was a little bit of a last minute proposal that I put through and it was largely fueled by the fact that the aquaculture veterinary medical officer employed at the Department of Ag unexpectedly passed away. And so there is actually a big gap right now in the state's ability to respond. Um, I think the Department of Ag is trying to hire a replacement, but that degree of expertise is gonna be very, very difficult to, to replace. So as it stands right now, there are other VMOs with other livestock uh, experience and expertise that will collect the samples and submit them to the University of Arizona. Uh, they are the OIE reference laboratory. My lab recently is now the second USDA lab approved in the state or approved in the country to do that kind of testing. But we're, we're, we're like right at that precipice where we can start going, but we need a little bit more support. Um, and, you know, one part of the proposal was to do the histology. And that was something that when Dr. Brock retired from aquaculture development, um, maybe, I don't know, that was 10, 15 years ago. That's when the state lost the ability to do the histology of the shrimp, which is really what you need to detect emerging diseases. As you guys know, you know, PCR is great when you know what you're looking for, but when it's an, un, you know, like a new disease that nobody's heard of before, discovered before, it's the histology that's really the first step. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, it did score low, so we were recommending to zero it out. Um, it does sound like there's a need, but you know, with that score, it puts the recommended amount relatively low. Um, uh, yes, go ahead, Christy. Yeah, I had sort of a general question. You know, this was targeting shrimp and uh, looking for diseases in shrimp. Um, are is there the capacity to do other aquatic species? Uh, yeah, uh, my, my lab is also branching out and doing fish work. So we do have an array of the emerging diseases in fish. Um, my personal background is I, I, I did train with fish pathogens um, in vet school and in my residency training. So that is something I do feel a little bit more comfortable about. Um, in the United States, there are a number of fish experts you know, that we can reach out to, but in the shrimp world, there, there aren't that many. So that was why I was seeking um, you know, just some extra support to basically fund my training so we could deliver that level of expertise for our producers. Okay, we have a need um, expressed by one of the members and some good information from the applicant. Do we wanna just keep the recommended amount as is and move forward? We wanna zero it out, we wanna, any recommendations? Yeah, my recommendation would be as is. Okay. okay. Any opposition to that? 
I think my only request and, and I, I I support it. Uh, my only request would be just to um, maybe in the the BAFO just get some better understanding of overall um, biosecurity needs for for this lab and and possibly you know what more um, that this capacity could achieve um, related to uh, animal industry uh, pathogen needs. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Christy. It's a good point. Okay, moving back up to the risk assessment. Um, we highlighted this because it sounded like from um, Dar's perspective, there was a need for such a tool that's being proposed. I guess my question on this one would be looking at their proposal amount. Are we really going to benefit by the information generated by what's 12% of what their original proposal was? Is this just something that we need to wait until funds, uh, sufficient funds are available to support it? And I guess- okay. Talking with the PI, she said that could fund six months of uh, postdoc. So whatever they could get done during that time. So that's, I mean, I think she was asking for two postdocs for a year. So that's a quarter of the time that she was asking for. And that will yield helpful information to the, the aquatics program. I think I would just, we have very few aquatics proposals. so. Yep. where I can see funding going towards aquatics, I generally try to support. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess this one isn't very much, Chelsea, but I think that the, the application is so limited. I understand Department of Transportation's point about this steam treatment, but I'm not sure it rises to the level of priority we need since we're so short on funds. And I think I would like to see that one zeroed out. Yeah, I knew you would come back to this. And just by looking at the number, unfortunately, you know, like a more immediate need is for just maintaining current safety, dealing with current issues like eradicating albizia trees or mosquito issues. Uh, but uh, yeah, if I may like to hear from uh, the applicant again to see this can wait for another year. I mean, there's something looks like it can be, can wait. Yeah, thank you, Tomo. Um, I agree and, and just like Tomo stated, um, compared to the other proposals that are targeting like new incursions, um, this is targeting already established weeds. So I, I would also agree with zeroing it out for this year's HISC funding. Um, okay. Um, Darcy, did you, um, what were your feelings on the coffee leaf for us? I know coffee is a really important industry. So if that's something that we need to, to fit in, I think that's justifiable if it's something that is going to provide value at that amount. Um, yes, <laughs> um, but but it would be hard to justify the value at the amount that we're talking about, Rob. So I would hate to say it, but I am okay with cutting it. Okay. There was that note on the side that at minimum 12 to... Yeah, 12 and I don't think we're in a position to raise that. Unfortunately, it would have been yeah. nice. Yeah, I mean, this is this is, the comments that I made earlier were based up upon um, not seeing the full reality. I did not read every one of our proposals to have a good idea of how I would adjust my funding priorities. Thanks, Darcy. Okay, so recommendation to zero it out and members feel free to speak up. Okay. So does that get us through all of the sort of bottom ones that we discussed initially? Yes. Um, the only other one 
it wasn't a bottom one, but it was a scalability one. Um, uh, but we kind of discussed, JC said, I mean, he kind of said any amount would be good. So yeah. we'll just move to that one when we get to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving forward, do we want to, we're looking at um, 85, 85,531 that can be redistributed to the current projects we have highlighted as increasing or wanting to increase, um, which is quite a few, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 projects that we would like to increase that amount. Um, obviously that 85,000 is not gonna be enough to get there. Um, do you wanna keep working from the bottom up? Um, yeah, I think we need to look for some more cuts before we do the redistribution. Do others agree? Yeah, I see Nadi. I agree. I guess working quickly from the bottom up is probably where we left off is probably the best place to start. Okay. So Although I think that there, there were some toward the top to toward the top of the list that might be able to cut as well. Okay because it didn't necessarily fall out along the lines that they were scored, I guess is my point. Yeah. Um, let me zoom out and sorry for the eyes, but just so we can kind of focus and you can see an overview of, oh, I wish I could share my whole screen here, but at least you can see kind of that lower to upper mid section of proposals and maybe places that are marked for increase and then ones that we have said can stay the same. Um, is there anything in particular here we could look at decreasing? I'd like to suggest, and I, I, I'm I'm with you, Kim. I try to support all of the aquatic ones because it's so hard to get funding for them. But I'd suggest that we don't, um, we've got stronger numbers for the economic work on Little Fire Ant than we do for the biofouling economic work. Um, so I guess I'd rather see some put towards that and then zeroing out the, the biocontrol economic. I'm happy to change my mind if one of the committee members wants to push back. Um, just to clarify, when you say you see stronger numbers, do you just mean like folks on the call that are advocating or? No, the numbers that are getting fed into an economic model and just knowing um, some of the numbers that we might have for biofouling. Okay, thanks, that's helpful. Okay, so we have a recommendation um, to zero out the biofouling project, um, but I'm thinking putting some of that funding towards the LFA economic analysis. I think it would be nice to hear from Donna and see um, what uh, she can do maybe uh, with the recommended amount and what she will need to have a good assessment for the economic analysis for LFA only? Well, I think she already stated what that was. So she talked about combined total of, of 20 of, of 50K for those projects. And I think we just kind of have to keep moving forward mm -hmm. the members. Of the Taya, Taya just sent a reminder that she's offered to reduce her proposal number 20 down to 30,500. So that will give some more money to work with. Thanks, Chuck, and thanks, Taya. Um, why don't we do that right now if folks are okay with that? Okay. Okay, back to the biofouling one. Um, so what would the recommendation be? Would we wanna bump up 
would we want to transfer this 15,000 to the LFA proposal? Honestly, I don't know if it, that's even going to be a viable project because it still doesn't get to her minimum, so. I, yeah, I can, I can do it. You, you can transfer it all to one project. I don't, I don't have a hard minimum. Okay. Let me just see what that is. Yes. Okay, so that would just make it under 30,000 to support the LFA economic analysis. I mean, we're not having any cost savings. So I don't know if that's what you're trying to get at, Christy, with that recommendation. Hey, what, Christy, were you recommending zeroing out both? I wasn't necessarily. I was just simply talking about the biofouling um, economic one. Okay. Okay, um, let's keep the conversation moving. Um, we have another um, offer from Tracy Johnson to reduce uh, the Rubus biocontrol proposal to um, 25K. That would be number 29. Okay. Is our members okay with that? I guess I'm okay with it if Tracy is, but I would like to not um, uh, cut any of the other um, Johnson biocontrol projects. I'm sorry, uh, Chelsea, that was 25,000 he, he, he um, offered to cut it to. Proposal 29, or rank 29, but um, he said 25,000 would be sufficient. Okay. I agree with Rob. Okay, um, so we'll decrease that amount for the Rubis, but we'll make sure we keep the other two proposals at least at what they're recommended right now. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> thanks folks for chiming in with voluntary reductions. Um, how about the rat lungworm? Let, let's keep moving the bottom up. Um, this is a lower scoring proposal. There was um, some comments from members in the Department of Health that this is you know, a, a good project. So maybe we wanna support it in some way. I wasn't sure that was what I heard from Department of Health, but um, I don't really want to put them on the spot for something as serious as long-term disease and where it falls out in their priorities when obviously they have a lot. Um, yeah, I guess I should clarify. It sounded like from Lincoln that it would be helpful information to have. Yeah, I think that's something that's really well understood in the state is how when humans are infected, the laboratory reporting process back to um, the Department of Health for human cases. But there's lots of these diseases that kind of have um, uh, zoonotic cycles as well. Um, so a good example of that is murine typhus that serves as a reservoir um, in uh, like mongoose and rodents throughout the state. Um, rat lungworm is another good example of this where it's not only humans that get infected by a rat lungworm, but also, um, you know, animals like Israel kind of noted. And that's pretty, uh, there's pretty limited understanding of that throughout the state. That's, that's kind of the value that I see in the project. If we could get some, some more insight into that. <clears throat> Thanks, Lincoln. I mean, looking at the long list above us, do we wanna recommend zeroing it out for, for this year of funding? Um, it's not the highest priority and it scored relatively low within our HISC CGAPS priorities. Um, if not, the other, we can keep it as is, we could decrease it a little bit. What, what are we targeting? It's like 68,000 is the remaining balance or the over? We are currently, we have 113 oh. 
that, so this is what we have available to kind of okay. divvy out to those projects, yeah. At the risk of sounding crazy, um, I, I think you can get started on this. Um, maybe just capping it at 18 and, and um, I think, you know, scoring low on the first time you're applying to this grant is <laughs> not unusual. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more background information on rat lungworm as well. If we're not targeting enough of the right spots on rat lungworm, it, it'd be great to understand that. Okay. Sounds so like I'm recommending to just make it an even 18. Yeah. Fine with me. Okay, and back to mosquitoes. Um, so if we wanna talk about these collectively, we, we can. Um, we definitely wanna increase our two mosquito proposals from DLNR and DOH. Um, so this one was requesting at least 45% of the requested amount, which was 72,000. Um, that would be, putting in like another 40K into the recommended amount. And then Cynthia's um, is recommending at least 50% of that. So that would be increasing the recommended amount by uh, like 25,000. Um, so we're looking at those increases if, if that's what we wanna meet. Yes, I'd still like to see those increased. And that sounds good to me. Um, I do I do think that, um, since I guess we're doing that because we're talking about mosquito proposals, but I do feel that there's still um, potential decreases that could be singled out. Okay, do we wanna bump this up to 72,000 um, since that's kind of the minimum that was suggested by the applicant? That, that's the Department of Health one? Yes. Yes, that's fine. And then what about the King one? The King one, um, they said they could do it at 50%, um, which would be... <clears throat> but were, did we flag it to get beyond the 50%? I think we plugged in the 50%, but we're still looking at um, putting more money toward it since. Yeah, I'm also for the Department of Health one. It would also help if we could get it up to 50%. Um, I, I will just note that Taya just took a voluntary decline on one of the mosquito projects. Um, we're all kind of working on the, the same page here. So, okay, so working with 50%. Uh, of the Department of Health one, that would be 80,000. 80, and then Cynthia's, um, Rob, you remember, we wanted to get it a little bit above 50%. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see another 15,000 or so in it. So please, okay. I don't know. Well, we're at I'm the agreement. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Do you have something? I, yeah, I would. I look, why don't we put them at fifty percent for now and see how it plays out, and, uh, okay. and then go from there. But I'm I'm definitely in favor of that. I like both of those proposals. Okay. Um. Let me just get that one. Okay, so that just drops our overhead to um, a little over 41,000, just so folks are aware of that. 
Can we look at uh, the topper echelon um, for potential tests? I, I think. Up here? Yeah. Okay. For the first half. Um, I see a couple that. Uh, hmm. I think that the, what do we have at the, the um, Albizia in Koolau one? I feel like that's still pretty high. What? Is uh, it currently funded at 98,000? Yeah, so I think JC put, um, you know, he's fined to round down on that one. So we just kind of rounded that out, but we also marked it as a place to possibly pull from. Um, so any recommendations on if we want to decrease that, maybe what that number would be? Yeah, I think I would like to see it decreased a bit. I'm not really sure what number I would like it decreased to. I think that, you know, JC has demonstrated that they can be effective, but at the same time, um, the scope of the problem is so immense that um, uh, I feel like some of these other projects uh, really have um, higher urgency. Yeah, I agree with you, Rob, for, I think for a couple of the maybe Albizia ones, um, it's more, it's not as much of a large scale at this point, and maybe the funding needs to go to the more immediate needs or the longer term control, like the biocontrol projects. So maybe we could take that down 30,000. Um, are you meaning knocking off 30,000 or taking it down to 30K? Knocking off 30,000, sorry. No, <laughs> 30, that's a reduction. This is, <laughs> this is the power hour, so I've, I feel it. Um, so looking at a requested, a recommended amount of um, 68,000 for that proposal, how do other members feel about that? Report. Oh, okay, I don't know what's going on. Okay, hold on just a sec. Sorry, what was that, Christy? Did you say something? Supported. Yeah, I support. <laughs> Sorry about this. Um, I just had a little frozen screen here. Chelsea, are you locking those numbers already? So, or are you still working on that? No. Nope. Okay. I'm not locking in yet. Um, JC is asked to chime in. Um, yep. Yeah. Hey, thanks guys. Yeah, I was actually gonna say you could take it down to uh, about 70. So that's kind of my, my bare bones to support the regional eradications as well as the continual facilitation of our community control teams. So 68, I can make that work. Thanks, JC. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Guys. Keep up the great work. Okay. Any... Hey, Chelsea, yes. can you take C gaps down to thirty-eight, please? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's hold off on how, just because that's a big increase we need to meet. So maybe let's just see what, what we have left in the pot to kind of give them a boost there. Yeah. All right, moving down the line here. Is there any other projects, um, unfortunately at the stay in the game that we wanna pull from in order to kind of increase the pots of these these other priority projects? I think it's not very much, but I think you could reduce the, the rod extension one by down to 30, at least, because I think that with other resources, uh, he's gonna be able to keep that position on through the year, even at a lower level. It's He needs some, but I don't think he needs the full 35. I know there's overhead and everything with that too, but. And that's a really small amount to reduce, but that's another one I could see surviving on a little bit less. Okay. Um, any objections? Okay. Okay. 
Just let me know if you want me to move the spreadsheet anywhere. Um, mosquitoes, that was already reduced. Um, how about the goat control projects? Do we wanna just, I mean, it scored relatively high. Um, there is the chance of eradication. Do we want to fund this at 5K or keep it as is? I guess if we increase it, sorry. <laughs> You're gonna, were you gonna say the opposite, Rob? No, no, my feeling was, I mean, I if, if that, amount is going to help with the surveys for goats, then absolutely keep it. Goats in the cola sounds like bad news. Um, so I don't necessarily want to zero it out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And I think JC stated earlier, like with that amount, he could at least do the surveys um, and get started with that. Okay, I'm gonna keep it as is. Okay, so we're working with 81,000. Let's just keep moving through things. Um, I don't wanna quite get into the locking in numbers yet, but I'm just gonna bold out the ones that we are sure about. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I was muted. Are all the blue highlighted ones that we are trying to increase? Yeah. Yep. Um, and I don't know if uh, at one point, if we want to look at the overall ISC funding because of the the partial, I was gonna make a comment about the, the BISC outreach one, um, but I don't know what their overall budget situation's like and don't want to cut it if they're doing poorly already. Yeah, I would say that they're doing poorly compared to last year. Um, so I would... Uh, what about the other ones? So, the only one that's over this year is MISC and MOMISC um, by a little over 100K. Um, OISC and KISC are relatively the same. They're a little bit, they're a little bit short, as you can see, compared to last year. I know. I know it's getting it's getting long. Um, so I guess I would be the one yeah. to suggest um, taking MISC and MOMISC uh, at least to the level that they were funded last year. Uh, sorry. Is that an increase, Christy? No. Right it's now they have an increase over last okay. year. I'm okay with that. Okay, so that would be um, like decreasing by 100K. Um, we could do it proportionally. I mean, it's all gonna be in one proposal at the end of the day. Um, but we can take it down by 75 here and 25 here. <laughs> this is not my forte doing the math, so just feel free to chime in. 
So that would put them at their overall funding of last year? It would still be a little bit more because okay. they're over by 106,000. Um, uh -huh. But that's, I, I think that's not a huge difference. Um, I think Adam has his hand raised. So yeah, go ahead, Adam. Yeah, I just had one point to raise and I know it's probably the case for almost every other entity, but like we haven't given pay raises in like five years. And so when you say like keeping it the same, it's not really keeping it the same in the grand scheme of things. Like if we actually wanna keep people, good people employed, we have to have a mechanism to be able to do that. And, and this is a huge part of that, obviously. And so I would ask, I, I'm happy to have a cut. I understand that, I can accept that, but maybe not all the way back down to where we were last year is all I would advocate for. So I would say, I think last year we were at like 823 something. So 25,000 on top of that would allow us to at least give a general increase to staff. Okay. Exactly. How do people feel about that? Um, so that, so you'd be ending up cutting at 75,700? Is that what is on the table? Yeah, and they would still get, you know, a little bit more with that, that six grand. Um, so we could, yeah, change that up. Um, okay. If folks are okay with that, I can take off 50 from this application and 25 from this one. Hey, uh, Chelsea and Rob, how about we take a look at um, number 17, uh, uh, JC's uh, tech, the tech to caucus portion of, of JC's proposal. So we can, we can be consistent with our other decisions across the board. And that's a good Garden. point. Thanks I, for I don't want JC to feel like we're targeting him though. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to hold off on making that decrease to MISC right now in MOMIS? Uh, no, I think we, no, we I think we're to. fine with that. Okay, okay. Yeah. making sure. <laughs> Okay, um, so this proposal number 17, um, we rounded down to 40,000 for that one. And so what's the conversation we wanna have? Is that about decreasing? Um, uh, I'd like to hear from JC, you know, um, um, what percentage of his proposal was gonna go to Tibichina and the other to uh, um, distributing tech to caucus. Sure. Um, I can pull that up right now on my thing. So our SciCat portion uh, comes up to about eight grand out of that. So not much. Yeah, that's not a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, any other discussion on this one? No, I just wanted to, to touch base on that. Okay. And along the same lines of being consistent, uh, we should take a look at Springer's Albizia Bow Control, I mean, Albizia Project number 26. Yes, okay, so this one, with the recommended amount um, where she stated she has to change the scope of the work, um, which would be a more community management of Albizia. Yeah. But what's the level at right now? 87, 7, 22? Uh, um, so that's the that's proportional. Right. So yeah. right now it's at 84. It's at 84. Yeah. Well, I know this level is 
uh, quite a bit lower than they received in previous years of the disposals. I guess this is one that doesn't um, seem like the highest priority, but I don't want to, you know, um, inflict unnecessary pain on the overall BISC budget, but. So if I can just chime in, um, I'm not really sure why this is being targeted at this time when there are at least a dozen lower scoring proposals on here, including some of my own, but um, the ROD staff that we have are not fully funded to do an entire year of ROD work. The rest of their time is doing albizia control. You know, with so if you cut that, then we're looking at cutting the entire ROD program at some point next year. I mean, I'm losing five staff at this point. Right? Okay. I mean, we're, we're, I think the reason we brought up the albizia is because we cut JC's albizia one as well, uh, Springer. But thanks for those details. Um, that's important to know, and we're certainly not targeting BISC and we're jumping all over the place here with the different scores just to make sure we keep things funded. So I, I'm fine with leaving that Albizio one intact. If everybody else is, I don't know, Darcy, is that? I'm okay? fine, I just wanna discuss it. Yeah, no, that was a really valid point to bring up. Okay, thanks Springer and, and thanks Darcy and Rob for bringing that up. Um, why don't we circle back down just to, you know, just have a little bit more organized conversation to the lower scoring ones that are still here. Um, we are trying to lock in these mosquito projects that were discussed as a higher priority um, at this 50% level. Um, so I just want to move up from those. Um, if we can circle back to the economic analysis that were discussed, um, biofouling, and little fire ant, I mean, they're scored relatively the same, but I think we can have this conversation together and it's best if we kind of put our resources to funding um, one of these versus both projects. Um, and it might be still cutting back, um, not redistributing this funding, but putting it towards, just putting a portion towards one of them. Uh, Christy's comment was there's just more data right now to move forward with the little fire ant um, economic analysis. And that doesn't mean biofouling couldn't be a project in the future. Um, it just might not be the year for it right now. Um, and a little fire ant uh, is a better fit. So are folks interested in supporting this proposal over biofouling? I would agree with Christy, I guess. Sounds reasonable. I agree yeah. that that sounds reasonable. I agree with that too. Yeah, I can go along with that. <laughs> Great. Um, and so what I'm thinking is we zero out biofouling, but bump this up um, to 20K. Sounds good, I agree. Okay. Okay, mosquitoes again, that was one we wanted to keep. Okay, circling back to the Koki control. It, it, there was expressed interest in, in doing this project. I did hear something a little different from Adam that 14% citric acid is working. Um, and this, they're asking for at least 50% of that proposed. I think at this point in the game, we're not going to get to that 50%. We have other higher projects we want to increase. And I think that's only fair just based on scoring. I agree. So recommending um, zeroing this out and maybe the applicant can talk with other okay. organizations. Um Oh, Dr. Yeah. Beard, please reach out to me and we can discuss um, identifying other funding opportunities. Yeah. Thanks, Percy. For, for, for one, I would see the ISCs are the one that's going to benefit the most from that because they're spending so much on citric acid. Would it make sense like, hey, if they think this is really important, 
but it comes out of their budget to support. Um, I don't know if that's an option or, or viable or just going to complicate things because uh, they're the ones that are going to benefit the most out of that. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, and, and I think that's definitely, there needs to be, a, it sounds like there just needs to be a little bit more discussion on the need, especially with the invasive species committees and, and the applicant. I think that would really um, make for a better um, proposal, maybe a project that we could fund uh, in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of the work could probably be done in collaboration with the ISCs potentially. Um, and so maybe that would... I, I think there's just a, re, a need to do more research on Koki control. Yeah. Full stop. Okay, so recommendation to zero this one out and um, please applicant reach out to um, the folks that you've heard on this call. Okay, thanks for the feedback. It, yeah, it would have been hard to do without more money. So I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. And, and I think this is a good place to get that conversation started and maybe some good partnerships. Great. Okay, moving forward. Uh, invasive algae interactions. Um, again, I, I think this just falls into the category where we don't have a lot of aquatics proposals um, and we'd like to, you know, fund these aquatic proposals. So keeping that amount as is. Okay. Um, hold on just a sec here. I'm having paranoia about saving. Okay, there we go. So moving on, um, we did have an ask to increase this devil weed project to 25K. Um, I think we should do that. I mean, there is a big gap between what BISC was funded last year and what they're funded at right now. And so this would be a way to kind of bump that up um, their overall budget. Yeah, it's not much, but it sounded like an important thing to fund at the the recommended level. So I definitely support pumping that up to 25. Okay. okay. I do too. Great. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Uh, rapid Ohia death. Um, I mean, this is one of those projects that again, I'm, I'm not sure why it's scored low. It's really important. So um, the recommended amount right now is 57,259. Um, we don't have it highlighted for an increase. Um, do we wanna just keep that as is? Again, we're working with BISC budget, which um, I think is already underfunded. Not I think it is underfunded compared to last year. Yeah, I don't think I would want to tap that for cuts. If Springer thinks that that's a workable number, even if it's not the ideal number, then I would say keep. Okay. Moving on. Um, we already said we're not going to... This is already locked in. I just didn't highlight it. Let me do that. Uh, okay, so outreach for Africanized honeybees. Um, I think this is a place we could pull from potentially. Um, I know it's really important outreach work um, and Layla talked about it and so did Darcy. Anybody have comments on this? Um, this is what we're looking at. We're 165, so we're doing good at um, getting some amounts to reproportion to those ones that need increases. I'd support reducing it. Okay, how about um, to 25K? Uh, yeah, yeah. That would put it at what, about 27%? About Can you try it? Yeah. Oh, now I'm putting it in 27. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, guys, um, 
are we just randomly, I'm speaking on behalf of the project, I'm just saying, um, what's the reason now, the, the rationale for reducing it? Um, so Because can... for some of the other projects, there was some discussion about, you know, what they could achieve with a given amount of money, but this just kind of got whacked. <laughs> well, that was... Not by much, but... Yeah, and that was the initial discussion we had going around that first round. So that's where I made notes. If people did have a minimum amount that they required or there was some scalability issue, um, I just made a note of that. So anything that didn't have that note um, it is something that we can pull from and we can have a discussion. And of course, it's open to you if you want to um, talk about that amount and what you're able to do with that. Well, I mean, every little bit helps since we're going to, um, is, is both labor intensive from the point of view of having to do outreach and spending time. So for every workshop, everything like that we do, you know, we require the time of someone, you know, even if I'm not the one getting paid. And plus we need to collect and process the samples. And for each Africanized sample testing, it basically takes eight full hours just to process that sample. So I uh, just put it in perspective, you know, it, we will do the best we can and we will try be happy to, but it is, you know, every little bit is a blow <laughs> basically. Yeah, um, understandable. And, and what we can do, um, and this is what scares me about this spreadsheet is we can start shifting those numbers we wanna lock in. Um, so the ones that I've bolded out, um, we can start locking those amounts into column M. And what will happen from that is it'll start reproportioning whatever extra amounts we have across all the, the projects that are still have a recommended award amount. Yeah, no, that'd be great. I just, I just didn't want to be, you know, I certainly didn't want to be quiet about it because it does make a difference. Uh, but I appreciate you letting me, letting me speak. So thank you guys. Of course. Yeah. And, and that might be the best way to do it when we're kind of doing these fine tuning uh, and reproportioning. It's just going to get messy. <laughs> And I chime in about the economics as well, because um, I mean, the suggestion was that you were going to combine the two into one, and then that would have been 29,000. So I was hoping you could just put 29,000 for the LFA economics as a starting number. Instead okay. Of, yeah. Instead of, so increasing that by 9,000. Um, yeah. Anybody? How do folks feel about that? Members? Well, if that's what's required, then, uh, and we want to do the project, then we'll have to bump it up, it sounds like. Thanks. Um, Chelsea, we're, we're down to 430 here. Um, yeah. So I'm just wondering, uh, I don't think we're going to make any significant strides in additional available funds at this point. And so I'm wondering if we need to get to the distributing whatever balance we have at this point to the priority projects, I guess, uh, the ones in blue, although um, I had hoped that the the king mosquito that was at fifty percent might get more than that, but understand if that's not a possibility. I don't think that was ever highlighted in blue, but I had hoped to get that one more. Um, but we have a a handful there that are in blue, and is that where the the balance is going to go based on how we prioritize those remaining projects? I mean, from our initial discussion, yeah. So that's where that this overhead, this over right here, um, which is 158,785. So that based on our initial discussion will get reproportioned across these, let's see, these projects highlighted in blue. Um, so if we wanna do that, we can start working with those numbers right now. <laughs> What do others think? Is that 
redistributing it evenly across those proposals. I mean, not evenly, but it would be, it would use the equation to distribute it, right, Chelsea? We can make the um, King proposal blue, then I would yeah. definitely support seeing how that works. Yeah. I was gonna say, can we include that one in the blues? I know that makes it. Uh, yeah. So should we do that and see what that looks like and see if maybe at that point there can be a motion to make a recommendation? Okay. Um, or am I leaving out a crucial step, Chelsea? <laughs> don't don't. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've never worked the spreadsheet before, so this is my first time. But um, I think, so what you're saying is to move all these proportions over that aren't highlighted in blue and lock them into the red column and then see how it gets redistributed amongst these blue projects, the, the leftovers. Yeah, I guess that would do it. That would be the easy way to do it, I guess. Okay. I think if you, you know the spreadsheet better than me, but. Okay. Um, hold on. Or Taya also has a suggestion in the chat that. I'm suggesting just sort by the highest cost of the projects um, and allocate the, allocate the cuts proportionately. You mean the, the ones are the in blue, Taya? But, well, you have the amount in the blue. That's the amount, that, that's the gap you need to fill, right? You have that dollar, that total amount, 150, what is it? 158. That's a surplus. 000. Yeah, yep. that, it, that's, that's, not, that's what you need to fill, right? That's the amount you need to. No, that's the surplus, right? That we're distributing? Oh. Yes. But does that, what's the gap? What's the amount that you're trying to fill? No, we, we just want to distribute that proportionally to the pr priority projects, which have been highlighted in blue. So I think the easiest way for Chelsea to do that was probably like she suggested, lock in all of the non-blue proposals, and then it would automatically feed into the ones in blue. Is that what you were saying, Chelsea? Yeah, I just don't know exactly how that's going to work in this column. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to turn out and if it's going to do what we really want it to do. Because once I start locking in these numbers, there's really no going back from that. Um, so we can either still work in column K and just redistribute that 158,000 line by line. But I think what you're saying is, you know, what seems fair is to reproportion it. Um, Not necessarily, I'm comfortable with going through the blue ones one by one and uh, distributing it that way if that makes sense for the committee. Um, and that way we would get more feedback from the applicants too about what, what is going to be meaningful for carrying out their project. Okay, well, let's, yeah, we're going to be running way over. So I really apologize for that. Um, let's talk about Hawaii Ant Lab. We talked about wanting to give them that full amount, that 296000 if that happens, Cass said we could zero out this proposal down below here. Um, if we do that, that would be increasing this amount by like a hundred, um, 106,000 approximately. And that would really decrease the available amount we have right here. Is yeah, that I, I could lose the, um, the money for Oahu and take it from the the larger proposal, but at, at this stage, any anything that we get that's less than we're asking for will mean a reduction in staff because almost all of my budget is staff. Um, we didn't budget for travel this year because we doubt I doubt that we'll be able to. So we're running really lean, and uh, a loss of any amount below two hundred and $96,000 will mean that I will lose at least one staff member, if not two. So then 
uh, ISC would have to decide, do you want us to lose the research program or lose the extension program? So if we bump it up to 296, that's adding 100,000, but aren't we removing 15,000 down here? So is it just 85,000? Yes, if you remove the 15,000 uh, from, if you zero out that second one, number 16, and increase the, the first one to the original asking amount, I'll be good, but I won't have any fat in my budget. Okay, um, this proposal scored really high and it seems like there is a push to really fund this program at what it is right now. Um, so do we wanna put it down for the requested amount and then zero out Oahu? Okay, I'll leave this with you and then okay. if you get it, you can sign it and just stamp it at the door, I'll pick it tomorrow. If you didn't get it, sign right. it. Oops. I'll sit right here. And your Oahu um, work will still be done, correct? Uh, Cass, will Oahu work still be able to be happen with if if we zero out your Oahu budget and just give you the requested amount that 296. Yes, yeah, so I'll make it an omnibus agreement. So I'll incorporate the Oahu component into the into the into the main statewide grant. So when I write it, it'll have the I'll have the elements of the Oahu work program built in. So if you zeroed that, that'd be okay as long as we got our ask for the first one. Okay. So I move that we pencil in 296 for Hal. Yeah, and remove the Oahu one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on, um, we already decreased MISC um, and MOMIS outreach and operations. Um, let's skip over that and let me scroll down. So we're working with just under 70K now for redistribution. Um, okay. Because this public outreach was the next highest scoring priority, I think we should add something to that. Okay. I don't have a good suggestion for what though, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> would uh, 20,000 be a meaningful amount? Let's see, we're working with just under 70, you said Chelsea, right? Yep. for a conversation start, 20? Okay. I would say, so looking at, I, I just have very few options for outreach this year other than HISC. It's, and normally it's very well leveraged and this year it's just not. Um, so if we get around 30,000, that would be half a position, which gives me something to work with looking for matching grants. Okay, so asking for an additional 30K, which would be 196. Um, you know, I'd like to get BISC's number up there. I'm a little bit blown away about four outreach positions, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know about the rest of the team. If, if, if a more practical number is 30,000, then I guess I'd be okay with that, but that only leaves us with 40,000 to split between five projects. Okay, so the uh, recommendation is to increase it by 30K. <laughs> okay. I think, what about 200,000? Because it's a big program and Big Island is very large and it'd be impossible to, to fulfill that work program without, you know, something approaching. Um. 200. I mean, it's a big island. That's why it's called a big island. So we have a lot of a lot of area to cover. Yeah. No, I recognize that, Cass. I think it's just um, scarce resources here with the uh, trying to fill gaps with other priorities. Um, I would be comfortable with the thirty thousand so that they could use that for leveraging another uh, 
uh, grant to cover a full time, if um, that's okay with the other committee members. Unless there's another suggestion. Okay, so going with that. Sorry, was that 30 adding to that? Yes. So um, I'm probably biased, but I just, I would really like to see the best water and biofiling position get more funded at least um, it really is just Natalie, and this is her only employee uh, managing the major vector of marine invasives. So uh, whatever increase we could see there would be helpful, I think. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Um, I guess that's jumping down a couple um, blue projects there, but um, we could do 80, I think I said 86 originally. Um, we can do 80. But any lower than that, that's my one staff member. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving. I, I, hey, this is Nate. If I could just jump in real fast. Um, so for us, we looked over the numbers at OOS over lunch. And right now we have all of our positions covered um that we need to have covered for next year the only issue that we're having now is it's basically down to uh hiring an early detection rapid response technician to help with Koki frog lfa other incursions on oahu or myconia helicopter time so i misjudged a little bit how much of the helicopter time um, would be taken out right now we're going to be pretty underfunded for myconia aerial now i can bring that to the os committee and say, you know, which is uh, a higher preference, uh, having early detection, rapid response capacity, or having money for uh, helicopter time. But at this point in the game for OS, any additional amount will basically be for Myconia aerials. And there is sometimes pockets of money for helicopter funds. Um, so I can definitely look elsewhere for that. Um, but I just, we re-looked at the, these, proposals collectively and we do have enough for our positions which is really important um we're lacking a little bit on the myconia but um i just wanted to throw that out there because i know there are some other projects worrying about positions right now and i know that's a really high priority so from os we're covered position wise um, for at least for our existing staff thanks nate thanks for rechecking those numbers um and with that, I would just suggest let's keep them at their recommended amount. Um, they are a little bit lower than last year's funding, um, but just to keep <laughs> this move this moving. Um, um, Grace just dropped out. Are we? Do we still have a quorum? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but it's it's ten thirty where I am, and I'm about to drop off. Since okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this. And again, um, this is not This is the recommended amount we're going to take to the council. Um, so there is room for commenting. I'm going to unhighlight that one. Um, and then I think with what Natalie said, I'm recommending to increase the ballast water biofouling to 80K. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd love to see that too. And if we can figure out elsewhere in the budget where we can pull things from, that would be great. Okay. Um, and it can be a proportional thing when we get down to it. Um, okay, so we are over. 4,000 here. We wanted to do an increase to King Mosquito um, and then also to um, the KISS detection and control, which is uh, short. It's uh, they wanted 530K at a minimum. Looking over here, um, I mean, I think it's the same conversation across the ISCs. You know, this is 
you know, a little bit less than last year, but again, you know, there's like pay increases. You want to keep staff on like, like Adam was saying. Um, I guess my comment there and I, is that the, the amount is probably more meaningful to the mosquito project looking at the level of funding than it's going to be to the kids. That's not going to get them to where they need to go, but it might help the, the mosquito project when you look at the, that level of funding for that proposal. So you're saying this little bit over 4K moving, bumping it to mosquitoes? I mean, that, my, my, my rationale there is that that's going to mean more to their overall budget than it's going to mean to KISS. KISS is still going to have a significant shortfall, even with that 4,000. Um, whereas I think uh, padding the, the mosquito project a tiny bit is going to help them out when you look at the numbers there. Um, but, you know, I don't know if others disagree on that. Yeah, I mean, if we're only talking about the 4,000, yeah. I agree with that. I think that will bring them to close to 50% uh, 50, 50 that they needed. Hopefully a little bit over 50%. Okay, so that would be moving it to 49551. Okay, we're still a little bit short on what we want to give to KISK. Um, Hi, this is Tiffany. Can I say something? Um, I recalculated the numbers, and if the other outreach and the ROD stay the same, 503 or 507 will keep me with all my current staff so we don't have to cross off priorities. Not 530. I realize that. It's the last one, so you might not be able to get it to that, but it is at 507 right now. The other two don't change. Okay. Any okay. question? Um, how much in the administrative portion was set aside for a potential EDRR? And is that rateable? to support yeah. um 40k was set aside for that that is rateable um and we can totally take from um some of the opportunity or not opportunities but some of the the budget items in our hisc support budget i think we have um i would say we have like 50k to play around with um so if if we feel that's a good use of those funds, we can push those towards KISC so we can get out of here. <laughs> so I had a quick comment is like in the past, there's been, I mean, it's very different than what you're discussing now, the way that's allocated, but um, could those funds become available later in the year, in the fiscal year? So maybe just a different way to do it. Just a thought. Are you meaning um, what Christy is asking about with the early detection rapid response funds, that 40K? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, That's correct. Yeah, they would be available for yeah, like new pest incursions. It was kind of like that emergency response fund that we've proposed at the, the legislature. So um, it would be open funding just to respond to anything new that comes in. And it just, I don't have a system of how we would determine what, what would get that funding or not, um, but it would sure. be available. Um, what kind yeah, of no, and I, I love the idea. I think it's a really good idea, but just asking like, if you don't spend the funds by like the end of the fiscal year, would they become available to other yes. projects? Yes, yes. Yeah, so we'd have a deadline by April where if they weren't spent, we would need to divvy those out. And potentially what could be done too is it could go into the HISC support staff and then they would need less money for next year and there would be more for project funds the following year would be another alternative if um, the, an urgent situation didn't arise. Yeah, that's a really good point, Rob. Thank you for that. 
that still doesn't get kissed up to where um, where I think that they need to be. So how much are we looking for for KISC? Sorry. 507 was the minimum. Um, and so, we are at 440. Yeah, so what we could do is pull um, 60, 65K from the HISC support budget. That would be our rapid response. Um, and there was a line item for a pathways analysis project. Um, and so that's that could go towards KISC and we could kind of figure out other funding sources for those projects in the meantime. I haven't forgotten, honestly, I haven't. Um. I mean, yeah. I hate to take that, um, and I don't know whether um, doing it at this point is good, but um, at least some of that. 65 seems a little bit high to me, Chelsea. Okay. Um, but, you're, but you're overseeing that budget, so if you feel really comfortable with that, that makes me, it seems like kind of a lot. <laughs> if the Pathways Analysis Project is something that could be fundable via, um, CGAPs and our private partner, um, then, yeah. then we could advocate for it there. Okay. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that amount um, coming out of HISC support and, and, you know, maybe we'll get that cushion at the end of the year back. Um, so that could also go be applied to like rapid response needs in the future. Um, okay, so with that, and Mike needs to go to bed, uh, <laughs> let's, and so what I'm going to do, because I'm going to have to do some recalculations with this, because that's actually bumping up our budget. Um, it, it's changing the total available amount um, that we have. So what I'm going to do is add that 60k um, into this, and it's going to be a little off for 65, I'm sorry. 441, 189 plus 65. Okay, that gives us 506189. Okay, good. So we're looking okay. Now, any other comments? I'm just gonna scroll through our spreadsheet real fast, not real fast, slowly. Um, so you can see, so look at column K. I'm not gonna mess with column M just because we're changing the total available amount with pulling from the HISC support budget. Um, you zoom out, Chelsea, sorry. What's up? Could you zoom in a little bit? I don't think we need the, the notes column anymore. It's just so, yeah, great, thank you. Uh, let me highlight it for folks. Okay. And then maybe a little bit more over, there you go, great. So we can see the, okay. the title. Okay, thank cool. You. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna read them out. I'm sure everybody's tired of my voice. And this year we are going to take a, a require a motion and a vote to recommend, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so just stop me if you need to talk or discuss, but right now in column K, this is what we're preparing for our recommended budget that will go to the council.
Um, and then you can just see we're a little over, but that will be adjusted um, for the overall budget. Okay, Rob, I'll, I'll just hand it over to you. Okay, so um, this year, because we're going by Sunshine, we need to um, uh, motion and vote. So um, if anybody would like to make a motion that we recommend this to the council for um, the FY22 budget for the HISC, um, now would be the time to do it. Um, I would like to move that we accept um, this budget with any small adjustments that might need to be made by Chelsea. Um, small meaning not more than $500 here or there <laughs> be made by Chelsea just for accounting purposes um, be sent to the HISC for approval. Okay. A second, uh, noting that any changes would just be identified during our council recommendation meeting. Okay, shall we vote? Um, let's see, go through the, the members here. Um, Christy? Aye. Um, Chelsea? Aye. Justine? Yes. Uh, Mike? Yes. Darcy? Aye. Janice? Aye. Layla? Aye. Did we lose Tomo? Yes. Oh, no. right on Tomo, you're still there. Uh, anybody else I forgot? I know Grace left. Any I think other? do Kim and I have to vote? Oh yes, oh, sorry. Yes. I totally missed <laughs> our, our colleagues. I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead, no worries, I. <laughs> Also, yes. Okay. I, did I forget anybody else? Motion carries. Um, I don't think there, there was a need for discussion there. <laughs> <laughs> but we still have time for public comments, yes. I think we need. It is on the agenda and required. And um, I, I know um, there are probably um, some additional questions um, that were helping happy to answer, but we'll accept any public testimony at this point in the meeting. Um, Elizabeth or Chuck, is there anything on YouTube or through the chat box that we should, it should be brought to our attention? I think all the comments in the chat box have been addressed. Okay. Um, no, this com no comments on YouTube, sorry. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. This definitely isn't the most, uh, it's not a perfect system for doing this. Um, it's a little bit messy, um, but thank you everybody for your patience. And we are always looking for input on improving it. So don't, don't hesitate. And if, if there are questions, like I know Cass had some questions, um, Chelsea and his staff as well as myself are happy to go over and, um, you know, take suggestions. So um, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Well, it's only three minutes past five. Not too bad. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Um, especially Mike staying up till past your bedtime. Hopefully not. On vacation. <laughs> On vacation. Oh, geez. Hey. <laughs> All right, you guys. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Rob, for, for chairing and, and helping move us along. I really appreciate it. And to all the applicants for sticking around and um, responding to comments and questions. We really appreciate it. An excellent job by HISC staff. Not an easy lift. So I appreciate other, it. Other than the technical breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, guys. Um, thank you. The night. Thank you. <laughs> Take it easy tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. Uh -huh. um, okay. Thanks, Chuck. How are you it's doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I was getting a little nervous. Um, let me stop streaming real quick. Stop share.